Hi, I'm Gail Marlowe, the Executive Director and Co-Founder of the Motor City Benton Mission here in the Metro Detroit area. Today, we are going to take you through the process of plarning. Plarning is the process of making plastic yarn. We use plastic yarn for making mats and pillows for the homeless. This is an example of one of the mats that we make. It rolls out to being approximately six feet long and about two and a half to three feet wide. Uh, each mat comes with a pillow. They're super warm, they're bug resistant, and they're really, really great for people that are living out on the street. So we're gonna take you through the step-by-step -step process. So the first part of the process is collecting the bags. As you can see, we have lots of bags to process, okay? So our organization, what we've done is we've lined things up and we've made it like an assembly line so that there's steps for everybody to participate in depending on what their skill level is. You don't need any experience, it's super easy to do. The most difficult part is probably the crocheting part, but I didn't know how to crochet before I got involved with this project, and now I'm pretty good at it. So we're gonna take you through the steps. So we collect our bags in groups of 20. The reason why we collect them in groups of 20 is so that we can keep track of how many bags we were recycling, and then also uh, so that we can easily give those to the people that are crocheting for us. So. Each mat and pillow set takes approximately between five to 700 bags, depending on the bag. So it equals between 30 to 35 balls of plarn that are used for it. If you're making the balls of plarn, which this is a ball of plarn, um, using 20 bags to make each one. So this is, this is 20 Kroger bags, okay? So here's the process that we're gonna take. You got your standard plastic bag here, Kroger. Alright, we're going to flatten it out real good. We like to make it into a rectangular shape, like that, okay. Um, not like, the mistake that a lot of people do is they want to flatten it out like this. We don't like to do it like that because uh, it makes the squares that we cut uneven and for the mats um, and just the symmetry of them, it's, it's good to have them all to be approximately the same size. So, I like to fold it like this. We flatten it out, and then we're going to fold it in half. And then we fold it again. All right? So, that's another step of the process. So, when you get 20 of those, we have them broken down. So, we'll have groups, like this is a group of 20 bags. Right? And we can hand these off to somebody who cuts the bags now. So the next step of the process is we're gonna cut the bags. Also, I'd like you to keep in mind too, this process is based on recycling bags that have already been used. A lot of times our, uh, our group is fortunate enough to get bags that are brand new, that come in boxes, and if that's the case, then we can use a rotary cutter or we can use a heavy pair, a heavy duty pair of scissors and we can get through a bunch of bags very quickly. So this is for the single, single plarning process. So the cutting process now is we're going to go about a half inch below the handle and we cut the handle off. And we go about a half inch above the seam. We're gonna cut that seam off. We keep the scraps because we use the scraps to stuff the pillows. We want to use 100% of the bag and make it recycled. So we just stick the stuffing in the pillows, right? And then once this is all stuffed up, then we'll we'll stitch up the seam right there. All right, back to the cutting process. So now we're going to fold this in half again. We're going to fold it in half again. And you're going to get four squares. So your average plastic bag, whether it be Kroger, Target, Walmart, Myers, wherever, you're going to roughly get these four squares that are made. Some bags that are larger, you might get five or six. Some that are smaller, you might just get three. Okay? So now we're going to do the actual plarning process, the knotting process. We take two squares. And we make a T like this. And then I'm just gonna make a little knot like that, okay? 
When you do the knot, you don't want to make it too tight and you don't want to make it too loose. You don't want to make it too tight because if the crocheter wants to change colors or needs to stop it or if there's just an issue or the bag breaks, you want to be able to un undo it. If it's too loose, then it's too difficult for the crochet hook to get through. Um, and then sometimes it just causes the mat to become a little bit looser, the holes to become pretty, you know, a lot bigger. So we'll do another one. I'm going to show you what not to do in this process when you're doing the flarning. This is a common mistake that people will make. They'll want to pull it from here. And if that happens, then this is what happens. And you don't want that to happen in the process. Because again, when you're crocheting, you want it to be like that. So we're going to have to undo it. Again, you pull it from the knot like that. <coughs> Excuse me. And again, pull it like that. Then, when you get through the pack, so this is a pack of 80 strips. <coughs> this is one ball of plarn. When you get through all of these, you'll have a big tail of plarn on the ground and you're just going to roll it around your fingers into a little ball. <coughs> just like that. So now you have your balls of plarn. It's pretty simple. It's a very simple thing to do. There's really no excuse for nobody not to do it. Um, we have people as young as four years old doing it and people as old as 100 doing it um, and of all types of disabilities. It's, it's a really neat activity. It can be fairly relaxing and therapeutic, believe it or not. Um, if you'd like to get involved with our organization and learn more about what we're doing, we also do outreach. We provide survival backpacks. We help facilitate different resources for people that are low income as well as the homeless and the needy. Um, we'd love to get you involved. Please like us on Facebook. You can check us out on Instagram and YouTube. And you can check out our website at www.motorcitymittenmission.org. We would love to hear from you and get you involved. Pay it forward. Thanks.